Hey, Paranormies, guess what? We have a special treat for you. For the month of October, we are going to do a 13th bonus episode where we're going to be interviewing two nurses that worked in the Toronto area who are featuring on the T&E show Haunted Hospitals during their Creep Week special from October 8th to October 16th. Now it's in its sixth year. TNE's Creep Week is set to deliver more ghosts than ever before, with over 160 hours of spine tingling programs. So now we have something special for you. We have a bonus episode, as Brie was saying, it's our 13th to celebrate October and Halloween. So we're going to feature two of the nurses from Haunted Hospitals, Amy and Sarah. They have their podcast called The Gritty Nurses, and they deal with hot topics and healthcare. And you could probably hear quite a number of stories with regards to the field that they work in, but we have them on our show because they're going to be talking about the paranormal. And so we have done an interview because they are going to be a part of um, TNE's show Haunted Hospitals, which is the premiere of their season four, starts during Creep Week. So make sure that you check it out and you look for Amy and Sarah's story. So we're going to go ahead and play the interview with Amy and Sarah now. And then we're going to come back and talk about how you can get in touch with us as per usual. All righty. <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to say welcome to Sarah and Amy today for being on the show with Sean and I. Yes, thank you. Happy to be here. I guess we'll get right into it. And um, my first question that I had was, when you were working at the hospital, I guess this would be for either of you, really. Um, what happened when you had the interaction with the ghost or the spirit? What did you feel? What did you see? Uh, well, maybe I can start before I give, I don't want to give away the whole story, but um, <laughs> essentially I was in a very dark and secluded area of the hospital, which not a lot of people have access to. And um, I was, you know, going down this corridor and I felt something um, like a presence. I guess, you know, when you sense that someone's looking at you, but you can't actually figure out where they're mm -hmm. coming from or what it is, I kind of got that yes. feeling. Yes. And then the hair on the back of my neck stood up and mm. I felt just this weird draft and um, I started to freak out. But again, I was in a very secluded area. It's not like there's anybody around. It's not like I could ask for help. So I mm. had to just continue on with what I was doing. And um, some more stuff happens, which you'll see in the episode. But at the end of it, I didn't quite know what to make of it. And because nursing is a very science-based profession, we like to be able to explain everything. And this was something I couldn't explain. And I never really talked about it with anyone because I felt like my colleagues wouldn't believe me, um, that they would just think I was crazy. And so I kind of just carried this experience with me all these years until I had an opportunity to share it on my own podcast and an opportunity again to share it on um, the show. It was really cathartic because it was almost like when I told it on Haunted Hospitals, people wanted to know more. And uh, I just thought it was a really good experience. And now I feel really comfortable sharing it and knowing that people kind of understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Amazing. And also, with that being said as well, um, you said that you really didn't talk about it for a number of years. Um, it wasn't discussed with any colleagues or nobody ever brought up uh, any other things that was happening in the hospital that you kind of connected with and said, oh, well, maybe there's something else going on here. I just felt like with everything that happens in general in a hospital, it wasn't top of mind. Like we're dealing with right. life and death. And right. after I did what I was supposed to do, I had to go back and look after more patients. And it just didn't seem like the right time to be like, hey, by the way, this creepy thing happened to me because we're here, yes. like alarm bells are ringing, you know, we're saving lives. Everyone's always kind of more focused on that. And I just, it didn't seem like ever the right time to bring it up. And then to be honest, I just kind of packed it away in a little box in my mind and mm -hmm. forgot about it for a while until I was trying to think of stories for our podcast. And this one was one of the first ones that came to mind along with a couple of others. Um, 
Like, I think it's just as nurses, we just, there's a lot we don't talk about because yes. there's always so much that we need to do. Like we're very task oriented. And if you ask most nurses, they do have ghost stories. And to be honest, I'm not sure why we don't share it. I guess it's just not really part of our culture. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you never know. There could be a future book in there for you guys somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be really good because, yeah, yeah, there's actually like a lot of interest in true crime and healthcare. Like that intersection <laughs> is always an interesting angle, too. That's right. Now, I guess this would be a question for both uh, Sarah and Amy. Um, did you believe in the paranormal before your experiences? So maybe I'll kind of take the answer to this one first and then Sarah can uh, chime in as well. So I think um, I've always kind of grown up in this type of environment where, you know, my parents and my grandparents kind of talked about, you know, spirits and ghosts. And I think actually in our culture, we call them duppies. I don't know if you know anything about like Western culture, but they talk about like rolling calves and these various different things. So I kind of always was around these environments where these types of conversations were had. And I I had to be honest, like I was a little bit skeptical at first, but I I think like in my podcast, I actually talk about, you know, some stories about growing up in my childhood at home and having and seeing some very strange things happening. And um, actually we did have a a spiritual cleansing that happened one time uh, where we had a lady come over and she was like throwing salt around. I was like, what is happening here? (laughs) So like in my own household, we, we, we had these conversations all the time, but again, like as a, as a nurse, as a scientist, as someone who went to school and had done post-secondary education in the sciences, I think as I got older, I kind of said to myself, you know, this, the, you know, maybe there's an explanation for all of these types of events and, and, you know, circumstances that I kind of encountered. But again, there are circumstances that can't be explained. Like, for example, my, my particular hospital story. And I don't want to get in again to all the details, but it was, it was a story that was actually passed down by many other nurses. And it okay. was, unfortunately, nurses have this cruel streak um, when it comes to initiating other nurses. So I don't know if you've heard of like lateral nursing, bullying or violence. It actually is something no. that's very pervasive within our profession. And okay. my story is actually in line with, you know, the, some of this bullying. So essentially, I was told to be to sleep in this particular room where this this tall tale they said had happened. And of course, it was actually based on true events of, you know, what happened with this particular patient in this room. And, um, you know, what when it happened to me, it was just it was horrifying. And I think that, you know, just having that shared experience and the fact that, you know, lots of people still talk about this story to this day. Always been around scary stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have a question that kind of goes with that for you, Amy, for your story. Did you ever feel that maybe the spirit or the ghost was attached to you? After? No, no, I don't think so. I think, you know, what when, when I had that instance happen to me, it, it just seemed really like there was there was heaviness to that room. I think that's probably the best way to put it that, you know, it was surrounding a a story and an incident and this room always carried this type of weight. And I think that, you know, it was more attached to the room and the space than, than it was to me. Cause obviously when I left that space, I never actually had any other, you know, paranormal types of encounters within the hospital walls, but even going into that room for a supply, that, that heaviness, that weight was always there. So that's kind of more what that experience was for me. Okay. All right. Wow. I'm just going to jump in here and say, you know, there's so many times we hear that um, in many of the stories that we cover that most of the time when people are encountering, uh, sorry, are encountering, I should say, a um, an entity or a spirit, um, it's always that heaviness that they feel. It's either on their body or it's just thick in the air or what have you. So there's always seems to be that kind of precursor to something that's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, One of the stories that I didn't share on haunted hospitals was this haunted elevator that I got in once on night shift or after a night shift. And um, it just wouldn't let me out. Like it just, the doors wouldn't open and I started to freak out and, you know, my cell phone didn't work there. And I just remember um, pounding on the door and nobody answered. And I, and I started to push the button for every floor um, to the hospital. And then finally 
I pushed the emergency bell and nothing happened, which was the scariest part ever. And then all of a sudden it just went to the 14th floor and it let me out. And I think there is no 13th floor in the hospital, but that would have been the 13th floor. And I kind of felt like something or someone was angry at me and didn't want to let me out for whatever reason. Wow. eh? It's these little subtle things that we may not pick up right at that time, but then, you know, we sit back when we're, you know, have that moment to ourselves and go, Oh my God. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Like, did that really happen? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So how often were you or others bothered by these spirits that you know of? How Was often it all, how often were you um bothered by these spirits? Was it every time that you went into that area of the hospital? Um I wouldn't say all the time. It was probably not that often, but then when it happened it was something that I couldn't forget. And again, even with the elevator story, I just, I mm. remember sharing that story, like maybe not in as much detail and people were like, Oh, that's weird. But unless you were there, it's hard to explain how much of a panic I really was in. And the fact that I thought I was going to be stuck there for hours because it was really early in the morning on a Sunday morning, like people just aren't around. And yes. when I went to go push the emergency bell, which you think would be for situations like this nothing (laughs) happened like it it didn't even connect it was an old school like bell like it didn't connect to a phone line or anything so just this loud ringing but nobody's there to hear it so I just sat down thinking I was gonna be in be in this for the long haul and then it just opened and I just flew like a bat out of hell and I took the stairs (laughs) all the way down I'm like there's no way I'm getting back in the elevator after this yes um so that didn't happen too often so I don't know if it was maybe the time of year or like something had happened to where spirits were angry in that part of the hospital. You never know. Right. And there's, there's never really an explanation for it. And I think it's, that's why it's so hard to put a finger on it too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I think just chiming in with my own experience, I think that it'd be hard to say that, you know, every time that someone went into that, that particular space that there was an interaction. But like I said, you know, there was always that heaviness in that room. And then again, that this room was now re re reused for something else. They didn't want to use it again for patient care. So that I think, you know, even everybody who worked there can actually identify the fact that, you know, this this room for whatever reason, this particular space just wasn't going to be used traditionally again for a patient care room. And I think, you know, I almost liken it to, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have seen this movie, um, The Grudge, where it's like in, you know, in in certain spaces, that heaviness, that trauma stays there. And sometimes it creates that type of, you know, negative type of energy. And I feel like that's kind of what that space left. So, you know, if we needed to go in, we would just go in kind of quickly and leave. We didn't want to stay in that room because you could start feeling that kind of negative energy in that space. Definitely. Wow. It's pretty strong. Yeah. Now, did you both ever worry at any point that your life was in danger? I wouldn't put it to that extreme uh, of a statement, but I definitely felt unsafe and I felt that I was not wanted in that space for whatever reason. Like um, for my story where it took place, there were cases of patients that had died where in the space that I was going through. And um, people don't often think about this, but there is so much birth and death that occurs in hospitals that any particular area you're in could have been a place where someone has died over the years because units change like where you're currently going, let's say for emergency room may not have always been an emergency room. So especially in older buildings, I think there's so much history. And so you never really know what's gone on. And I always think about like, if these walls could talk, what would they say? Yes, yes, definitely. And especially some of the older hospitals, usually in the downtown cores that have many years of, of utilization and, and, and uh, many stories involved. Mm -hmm. And there's always more creaky things in older buildings, like pipes and air vents. And um, I don't know, just like things that you don't know the history behind as to why they are a certain way. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And I think that like, uh, 
in my particular situation, again, I don't know if I would say that I felt like my life was in danger, but I definitely was scared. Oh, I don't know if I could say this word. I was definitely scared shitless. <laughs> I definitely yeah. needed to get <laughs> the hell out. I need a GTFO. I definitely need yeah. to get out of that space, right? <laughs> but like, you, you, you just know, like, I, I just felt that I couldn't stay one second longer. Like, I didn't want to find out what could happen if I stayed any longer. So that's why I kind of beelined out of the room makes sense for sure for sure and as i said i'm the, always the person that would be running out the door um so i yeah. think if i was to do that uh yeah i would brie would stick around and find out and have a conversation i would just be like so tell me what happened you know? um so i have a question actually since you said that uh did any one ever consider bringing in a medium or someone that can connect with the energy and see what was actually going on in there? I think that in the hospital setting that would have been frowned upon if not worse. I just I feel like hospitals are a very like I don't know how to explain it. Like there's not a lot of thought or openness to that type of thing because it's not science-based. So mm -hmm. I think that in order for that to even have happened, it would have had to go through so many channels that for sure somebody would have shot it down. And the area of the hospital where my story happened was actually somewhat um, like you had to have special access. So it wasn't really for everyone. I guess like if we kind of did it like on the down low, that might have worked if we didn't tell anyone. Um, but I'd never actually considered that until now. That's a good idea. Yeah, just wondering, because they say that they can help spirits move on, and maybe they can also do that with any dark energy. Yeah, I don't know if it happened in our, like, I mean, in my particular situation as well. I think that mm -hmm. um, pretty much just echoing what Sarah had to say, that I think it might have been frowned upon. I think, you know, I feel like there were conversations kind of at the nursing station and in the, in the lunchrooms kind of about the, this particular space. But um, in terms of like a formal cleansing, I don't think that ever, that conversation ever came up. It would have been interesting though, if one of the nurses that worked there did it. But I think the yeah. fact, if we had to bring someone in, I think that would have ruffled a lot of feathers for sure. Mm. Yeah. And I wouldn't be well, surprised if the nurse did it. <laughs> if any of the nurses were native at all or or were like into holistic medicine as well and use sage and sage the room. <laughs> I guess it depends on the person the as well yeah. um, and, and, you know, what they're trying to do and if they feel that they've had an experience. You never know, right? People do things for, for, for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah. I just ask because I work in long-term care and obviously a lot of people pass away there. And um, my sister and a couple of the nurses, they're kind of into the spiritual stuff. So... That's what they did um, when they felt that there was something going on that shouldn't have been going on on the floor, like with the call bells going off and nobody's in the room. That used to happen a lot. Oh, so they actually they actually cleanse the the room, or like is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, interesting. They, Maybe... they were so scared and didn't want to go in the room anymore. One of them were like, "Let's just do it." <laughs> and did it help? I guess so. I haven't heard any stories about it. My sister told me about it years ago because she, she still works there now, but um, she was the one that told me all the stories. But some of the girls still see stuff when they're there. Really? Okay. I mean, it, it's not a bad idea. It's not going to harm anything if you cleanse it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yes, definitely. A cleansing would help, you know, with kind of making that heaviness kind of go away and we've seen that again in multiple things that we've dealt with not dealt with on a personal level but researched and what have you that usually there's a lot of clarification when um somebody comes in and kind of helps them move on to that next step um We've talked to uh, a few clairvoyants and, and psychics and stuff like that who deal with the paranormal, and they get extremely involved with some of these um, entities that they run into. And it's pretty amazing to see what they can do and what their scope is um, to kind of help cleanse the space. It's really interesting. I guess in kind of finishing it off, I, I really would like to find out have any of you guys have had um 
issues, not issues, but uh, instances with the paranormal outside of work. Oh, we definitely have stories oh about goodness. that. <laughs> so many stories. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, maybe, maybe tell us your, and maybe both of you can tell us your favorite, or not your favorite, but your maybe most something. memorable. Yes, most memorable. I had a story or an instance where when I was in university, I stayed. Um, so I lived in a house with a bunch of other students and it was during exam time and it was close to Christmas. So I think everyone had gone home because they were done their exams and I had this really late one. So I was in this house by myself. And if I remember correctly, it was an older house because it was like a hundred years old, but it'd been renovated inside. And I, my room was actually in the attic. So the, the walls of my room, it was essentially like like the roof, right? Like it was kind of at an angle. And then on um, one side, there was a crawl space, which connected my room to my roommate's room, which was on the other side of the attic by this door that you kind of had to push in. Okay. And so I remember being alone in this house and it was nighttime. And then I hear this knocking, like it's coming almost from the outside of the roof. And I was like, oh, it must be coming from the crawl space. So I somehow got the courage to open that door with a flashlight and I'm looking around and I'm not seeing anything except for clothes, like random stuff. And then, so I close the door back and then I hear knocking coming from the other side of the roof. And I'm like, oh, if it was an animal, how did it move that fast? Like I didn't hear any footsteps. (laughs) And then I was freaking the hell out. And then suddenly the knocking comes from like both sides at once. And I was just like, I just ran downstairs and I'm like, I need to get out of here. And I ran outside so that I could get a look at the roof from the outside to see what was making that noise. And I couldn't see anything. And um, I felt like, again, that feeling that I explained where the the hair on the back of your neck is standing up. And then, um, so I get back upstairs to my room in the attic and the door that I mentioned that goes to the crawl space, I could have sworn that I left it closed, but it was like open a little bit so I don't really know what happened there yeah, yeah. Um, but like I said it was an old house and I'm sure a lot of people had lived in it over the years and I happened to be the only one there at the time and mm. uh, yeah it was really freaky and even though I lived there for two years that never happened again so I don't know wow. what that was that's, hmm. yeah that's kind of crazy. Not going to lie. Um, again, I would be sleeping at my parents' house that night, <laughs> uh, especially when the house is empty. <laughs> I, I wish I had that option, but I lived, it was like an hour and a half away from my home at the time. Oh, and, and no. I had no car. Oh, oh yeah. No. yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd be sleeping in the snow or in a shed <laughs> in somewhere the else, not the, in the house. <laughs> I probably should have slept on the couch on the main level. That's what I should have done that night. What about you, Amy? Yeah, I mean, I I think that I I hope that my cousin will listen to my my parents, my mom will listen. Because (laughs) I I think one of the things that I've always said, like I I grew up in this home and it was in Brampton. And it was a very, it was an older home. And there was so many things that happened in this house that was unexplained. And I'll I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, there's two stories, but I'm going to, I'm going to just give you one. Okay. So um, I, so the, it was a house, it was like a three bedroom and I remember um, we actually had someone who lived in our basement and um, she had died, passed on. And, um, you know, we, we just had some strange things that were happening. Right. Okay. And I remember um, like I shared a room with my sister, but when my, when my grandmother came over, like my sister would end up sleeping at a friend's house or she would sleep somewhere else. And then it would be like me and my grandma that would share this room. So, but there was, the room was big enough that it would have two beds in it. Right. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a scaredy cat, right? I love watching horror movies and all this stuff, but I'm a big chicken when it comes to nighttime. So yes. I was happy to have someone sleeping in the room with me. So this is where <laughs> things kind of, you know, for me kind of took a turn. So I woke up kind of in the middle of the night and I was like, oh man, I need to use the bathroom. But I had seen that um, my grandma had just got up out of bed and I watched her. She opened the door and she, I can hear her feet walking down the hallway and then I saw the light in the hallway because I can kind of just like place from where the bedroom was you could see the light flicker on so I was like oh good someone's gone to the bathroom so that means I'll go too so I don't have to be scared going by myself okay so I kind of waited a little bit got up 
started walking towards the bathroom, pushed the bathroom door open because like the light was on, but the door was kind of ajar. It was pulled up, pushed the bathroom door in and nobody was in the bathroom. And I was like, wait a minute. Like I just saw my (laughs) grandma like walk to the bathroom. That can't be. So I was just like, okay, well, for whatever reason, I just didn't think anything of it. So I quickly peed and I was like, okay, I'll go back. So I started walking back and I was just, and then I turned on the light in my room and she was laying in the bed and I was like, Oh, wow. So if I didn't follow my grandma out of the room, who did I follow who out did of the room? Yes. I was yes. shook. <laughs> just yes. really laying there and just being like, that was messed up. And it t- I told my mom about it. I told my grandma about it. My grandma was like, not me, child. It wasn't me. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then, you know, they're like, it's like, it must have been a dumpy. I'm like, oh, no, it was a dumpy. So I was just scared. And I mean, th- that was like one of many types of incidents that I had in my childhood home growing up. Like my cousin, I think Sarah's heard the story many times. My cousin's like, there was bad energy in that home. And wow. he would come there and he would be so scared. He, and he talked actually on one episode about seeing in that same room, seeing shadow people coming out of the closet. And I was like, oh my God, why didn't you tell me? And he's like, because <laughs> I was scared, Amy. And I was like, yeah. oh no. But yeah, so that house just had so much negative energy and i actually do remember my mom having someone come in after this particular lady who lived in her basement died and having like a cleansing ceremony not really understanding fully what was happening right but just kind of you know i knew stuff was not right in that home did it change after the cleansing i don't think so i think just things kind of yeah up if you want me to be honest <laughs> oh, wow. i don't think it got like i there was like when i mean there's so many instances i remember we my aunt ruby she had this dog named lady and you know i think dogs can sense things too right oh for and sure i just remember yes. um you know being home by myself and i was dog sitting and this dog was yapping crazily at the basement door and the basement door was closed and i was just like, oh, like shut up lady just be quiet and she's barking 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 and i opened the basement door and she's like growling and backing up and i'm like oh wow i will just close this door and that's yeah. gonna be that <laughs> so just, just too many odd things that happen in that that space well, again, I, I just want to thank you guys so much for being on our show. And I did want to mention that uh, you guys can catch Sarah and Amy on their own show called the Gritty Nurses Podcast. They deal with hot topics in healthcare, And essentially, I'm sure you can get their podcasts that anywhere that you can get podcasts. You got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. And also, don't forget, you can see their story on season four of Haunted Hospitals um, in TNE Creep Week starting October the 8th, which is tomorrow. So make sure you check it out. Again, thanks, Sarah and Amy, so much for being on the show. It was such a pleasure. Thanks Thank for having, having us. us. Okay, welcome back. How was that? I know I really enjoyed the interview with Amy and Sarah. They were really interesting in how they approached the paranormal and um, how really they didn't let that stand in their way of their job. Not that everybody does, but Mm -hmm. they really just kind of persevered and let it happen and um, just kind of focused on the human aspect of of, of their jobs, which is amazing, you know, to have some of the experiences that they talk about on, the, on our, our interview and just, they just continue on with, with um, what it is that they do on a daily basis, which is save lives. All right. So we will see you again in October during our season premiere of the fourth season coming up on October the 25th, just in time for the Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yes. So get in touch with us um, and let us know, um, you know, your experiences with the paranormal. We would love to have it on the show and talk to you about it or even just feature your story. And Brie, let us know how they can get in touch with us. All right. So you can find us over on Facebook at Paranormal Files Canada, on Instagram at Canada Paranormal Files. You can reach us at Paranormal Files Canada at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at PFC Sean underscore Brie. 
And you can now find us on TikTok at Paranormal Files Canada. And definitely come out and check us out there. Check out our videos. We're posting up our stuff when we go visit places. And uh, let's get to 1,000 uh, followers so we can go live and talk to you guys while we're recording. Absolutely. Let's tickety talk it up. All right. Well, that brings us to a close of our bonus 13th episode for October. Again, as we said, we are going to see you before Halloween, but we're going to say have a happy Halloween if you don't get in touch with our newest episode before Halloween, because we know you're all busy with Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) So take care of each other, take care of yourself, and don't forget to stay spooky. Stay spooky.